Welcome to the Aim High Podcast. Good day, High Flyers. Do you want to get into real estate but don't know where to start? Do you wonder how others are living rent-free? Our guest today is Joe Cohen. Joe's first deal fell through, but it was a great learning lesson for him. And by the end of this episode, you'll see how any mistake can turn a negative experience into a positive mindset. Find out how he started in real estate and how working with others helped him to grow in the space. Find out all of that and more today, where we provide real estate investors with the tools to achieve generational wealth. Welcome to the Aim High Podcast. I'm your host, Bud Evans. Good day, High Flyers. Welcome to the Aim High Podcast. This is your host, Bud Evans. Today, I am here with a friend of mine, Joe Cohen. Joe, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Coach Bud. I like to call you Coach Bud because you are my coach. Awesome, man. Thank you very much for that. Joe, I know you're pretty good, buddy, but do me a favor. Give me a quick introduction. Just an inspirational leader here in Southern California. My goal is to inspire others to perform at their highest level. And I'm a insurance professional, real estate professional, and now... A serial entrepreneur. <laughs> Joe, let's talk about how you got here. Yeah, it's a long journey, but I started in the real estate industry in 2001. I answered an ad in the newspaper. They said, we will license you. And I was sitting there working like four jobs at the time. I literally was working a radio broadcasting job at ESPN radio. I was an electrician. I was a caterer. I was doing anything I could to make ends meet. And I was like, you know what? Real estate seems like something I, I'd probably be able to do a couple deals and make my annual salary and just surf the rest of the year. So I went in and got into a little training program with this lending and real estate company. And yeah, I have the gift of gab. So they actually, they, uh, day one, when I went in for the interview, they gave me a list of phone numbers and addresses. And they said, okay, here's how we're going to determine if you get into the program. If you book one appointment for one of these real estate agents, you, we're, we're, you're in. And I was like, no problem. So I sat down at this phone, didn't know anybody around me. And it was like a boiler room setting. And back in 2001, it was like all just like hammering phones, right? And so I get in there, I get my stack of leads and I just start smiling and dialing. And sure enough, after my like 15th lead, I got somebody on the phone and I just started calling, going through the motions of warming up with them, finding commonality. And next one thing led to another and I got an appointment. And I think it only took me like an hour and a half. So they were like, you're hired. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now and, you have is your first cold call and, you're, and you nailed it. That's it. First cold call and nailed it. Yeah. It took me 15 to get a hold of somebody. That's the power in numbers, right? Exactly, right? We look for the 100 to get 10 to get one. Yeah, exactly. And then from there, I went through this, I was just an appointment setter and then I started getting appointments for everyone. So then I moved into the licensing program and I got the license. And once I got my license, it was like, I was off to the race. I got the license, started doing loans at first because that was my quickest way to income. And then from there, got some, I got my first listing and I'll, I live here in Southern California. And so it's pretty wide span. The first listing I ever got was in Sherman Oaks. And I lived in Orange County, which is like a two and a half hour drive. And I got to tell you, I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> I had to open the houses. I had to go join. And back in those days, we didn't have the combined MLS. So you had to actually go join the association of the, oh, of the area that you wanted to be in. So it was a different time. And we still hand wrote offers and all that kind of stuff like that. Yeah, that's how I got into real estate. Man, I don't know what I would do without things like showing time and dot loop or DocuSign right now. Digital right? ink, yeah, all of that. Yeah, that's so it's easy. So much it's more easy. efficient. Yeah. So let's move forward a little bit. Let's go into your first deal. Yeah. Right. So in 2021, I started my real estate investment journey and I was helping people get houses, right? I was helping people get investments. And they were making all the, we were going up against a lot of these investors who were making cash offers or just coming in with just boatloads of cash. And I'm like, where are they getting all this money? You know what I mean? Is it just mattress money or is it, there's, is somebody knows something that I don't know? That was the key. People knew things that I didn't know. And so I needed to go train myself. And so I joined homeschooled in March of 2021 to fill that missing piece of the puzzle. And it took me like about six months of really building a foundation of my business 
to really capture my first deal. It, it, and I didn't actually get my first deal until I was eight months in. And it's funny because when you're going through these types of trainings, it's almost the shiny object syndrome. You actually put yourself into a bunch of different things, marketing wise, and you got a bunch of lines in the water. And I was just spending a ton of money and not getting any deals. So I started to feel that subconscious, I need to get a deal to recoup my costs, right? Yeah. And so there, there was a little bit of mo a moment where I was feeling desperate. And so rather than keep spending money, I started using my, my, my real estate license and I started looking for properties on the MLS and all the while my, my click pay-per-click ads and my, all of that stuff was working in the background, but then I caught onto one and it was a big deal. It was like, it was a very large amount of money for a new investor, but here in Southern California, we're, our mindset is a little bit skewed with large sums of money because a $1,600,000 home here in Southern California might be like a $800,000 home in Jersey. It's less. half. Yeah. <laughs> Even less. Right. Yeah. And I was using the coaching and the coaching basically said, yeah, your numbers are different than what our numbers would be on the East coast. So it makes sense. So let's go ahead and keep pushing forward. So I took my coaching and I said, I called the listing on the MLS and I talked to the listing agent and I built rapport with him. I said, Hey, look, I'm an investor. I want you to write the offer for me. I want you to represent me. And you get both sides, both sides of the commission. He's like, done. Okay. No problem. So we wrote the offer at 1,650,000. And he calls me back the next day. He's like, got it. And I'm like, great. Now where do I get the money for it? <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's where the journey really began. Yeah. So yeah, I got my first deal at 1,650 and uh, I put the deposit down, which was like $50,000, which was a big chunk of money. Yeah. I had gone out and I had capitalized my business. So that was important. And that was the number one rule that I learned that. I wasn't going to get a deal until I actually could show proof that I can actually close the deal. And so I went out and I got, I capitalized my, my, my business. I got a business line of credit. I got a bunch of other lines of credit for credit cards and some of the other things to build my business credit. And then I also had, I'm blessed with having equity in my home. So I had a home equity line of credit for $150,000. So I used those funds to get the deal secured. And then I contacted a hard money lender. And then he was going to fund me with, he told me at the time he was going to give me 90% because I have some rental doors here in Southern California, have 18 years of real estate experience. And he said, I could get you approved for 10% down. I said, okay, great. So lesson learned here. This is where the big lesson came in. I didn't get that in writing. I didn't get a commitment letter from that hard money lender. And I went full bore into this deal with thinking that I only needed to bring 260 grand to the table. Right. And I had it, I had built up the capital to be able to close the deal. Right. I got to the signing table and the loan is only for 80%. I'm at the closing table, bud. And I'm looking at loan documents that says I have to bring in an additional 10% down mm -hmm. on a hundred, a $1.6 million. And I was, I was like, I'm not signing this. I was like, I can't sign this. This is not what we agreed to. How do I, how do I get a new loan? We got to do. So I went around and I just started, we actually got an, an extension of escrow and the one thing led to another and the lender couldn't perform. He just said, I can't get you the extra 10%. And I was like, well, I can't come up with the extra 10%. And so we had to exit escrow and thankfully I knew. I could negotiate for my deposit back. I'm like, yeah. look, come on. At the end of the day, you don't want to keep $50,000 of my money. Right. I didn't really, you're not getting any harm or foul here. I'm, we're just, I just got to exit. Right. They said that because you told us that you were going to close, we'll keep half. So rather than go into arbitration and keep dragging it out, I just said, all right, let's go ahead and go because I needed to keep moving forward. And that's the, that's another key thing. I can't dwell on the losses because. I just have to keep pushing forward. Otherwise I'm not going to accomplish my goals. I could sit there and dwell on it. I can go crawl up into a ball in the corner 
and cry about it. And the only thing that's going to do is that's going to affect my mindset for future activity. Yeah. And that's a key word there, man. Cause like we're, you can let that crush you or you can just keep grinding. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the key is that whatever hurdle you have to jump, it's there for a reason. Have you ever noticed that bud? Like when you're going through the toughest times on the other end of that tough time is greatness. Yep. Yeah. Going through it right now, buddy. Just coming out the other side right now. We had a couple yeah. of bad flips and now here we are. One just went on the market Monday and the other one didn't even get the chance to go on the market. We got a, we got an offer today on a project that wasn't going to the market till Monday. So that's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. And we were like, this is going to sit for a little while and here we are. Yeah. Boom. Done. So that's great. Yeah, yeah, I felt at that time, this was just a light bulb that was going off in, above my head. Because what are the things that I learned in just that short period of time? I got the deal under contract in October. We were supposed to close in November. I extended escrow all the way till the end of, I think the beginning of December. Hey, great negotiating skills. I mean, you can't have any better negotiating skills, right? We extended escrow like four times and each time they're like, you had millions of dollars in your proof of funds. Why can't you just close this? And I used my training and I said, Hey, I, at the time that I made the offer, I had those funds in there, but we're an active real estate investing company and we're getting in deals all the time. And so those funds have been allocated. So I can't just go take funds from another project and put them on this project now. And so that's what kind of kept the things going along and them staying in escrow and me trying to find a different route to take. And then the other thing I learned is that you can find deals on the multiple listing service yeah. that are in distressed situations yep. and you don't have to pay any extra money for it. Licensed <laughs> agent, somebody will pay you to buy it. That's right. As a licensed agent, someone will pay you to bring a qualified buyer to their distressed situation. So where are you going to find the most motivated sellers? on the multiple listing service. Yep. They have already made a decision in their mind that they're going to sell that property. They're going to offer between four and 6% commission on that. And they just want to get rid of that asset. Yep. So yep. now it's just upon me to find it, attract it towards me, and then make the offer that fits the property and negotiate the terms. And so the beauty to that, bud, was I figured out a system in that three month time frame, And now I can teach and repeat that system over and over again. And so it fired me up and empowered me to go start a real estate team. And in January, so I lost that deal in December of 2021. And I started my team cone property group in January of 2022. There you go, man. See full blown business, whole, whole nine yards. Right. And then I ended up getting my first team member in the first month of January. So it was all of where I was meant to be at that given time. It was all a part of the plan. See, cause I set goals at the, at the beginning of April, 2021, when I started my investment business, all of that, that beginning with the end in mind led me up to getting to that point in December where now I found my niche. Yeah. So and let's then, go into that, right? Because here's the thing. Now you got handed a bunch of lemons. I'm going to use the cliche, right? You get handed yeah. a bunch of lemons and out the other side, you made a bunch of lemonade with it and your yeah. group. I've been watching you explode over the last year. And now let's go beyond that. Cause now you found your niche. Can you do me a favor and explain to me what you, what your niche actually is? Yeah, we are a team of six licensed real estate invested minded real estate professionals. And yeah. so what we do is we identify distress situations on the multiple listing service. We get the properties under contract and then we either assign the contract to another investor, which is considered to be wholesaling, right? And then, or we take the project on ourselves and we bring in a, 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 an investor to earn passive income on our opportunities that we find on the MLS. Right. So now your first flip collapses, you take that and you run with it. You create this team. You guys are starting to crush it. Now explain to me, am I allowed to talk about the TV show? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So I mean, Daniel talks, talks about it all the time. <laughs> right? Yeah, he does. Right. I didn't know if I was allowed to bring that up, but it's American Idol. You're not allowed to say who the winner was, right? Yeah. So now you your first flip fell through. Yeah. Now you start flipping again, and then you wind up on HGTV. That's right. Yeah. So first flip fell through. We assigned our first contract in, in December of twenty. In December, we or I'm sorry, jam, January. Excuse me. We get a burn down property under contract, and then we flipped the contract right away. We made the 2%, and then we're just off to the races. Right after that, we get another deal in LA from a wholesaler who saw us based off of our real estate posts and stuff like that and hit one of my team members up and said, hey, I got this opportunity in LA. We analyzed the deal. Now, this one's one of those ones that you definitely are going to learn on because the terms were there was a squatter inside. You can't see the property. It's in a kind of a rough neighborhood. So you're not really going to get much in the form of assistance. And you have to just take the guys willing to take cash for keys. Okay, great. We got that going. And then, so once we actually got into the deal and we closed, we found out that the guy didn't want to negotiate for cash for keys. He wanted to live there. He just wanted to live there rent free. And so. Then we had to go through the eviction process, but it, all the while our team is growing, our team is developing and we're getting more deals. And we got another deal under contract in Lake Arrowhead. And we got another deal in con under contract in Virginia because of another referral that came from our activity on social media. And then we got another deal under contract. And so we have a lot of deals coming to us now, all within a year's time frame, And we have this now property in LA that has the squatter situation. And boy, can I tell you, you go out to these networking groups and you're meeting all of these different people. And I found this company that does landlord advocacy. I'm like, great. I'm a landlord now by, by buying a property with a tenant inside and I need to get them out. So how can you advocate for me? He says, we can get the, we can get the squatter out in 90 days. If we have to evict him. I'm like, that's faster than anything I've ever heard of because we're in California here on a, an eviction moratorium because of COVID. Yeah. So I'm like, well, how much is it going to cost me? Eight grand. I was going to pay, I was going to, I had a budget for 10 grand for cash for keys anyways. Right. So eight grand, 10 grand, I'm saving two grand. Let's go ahead and go with that. Yeah. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> it took us five months to get that squatter out. In the meantime, because I'm a part of the homeschool group, Tark mentioned that he was looking for people to film and flipping 101 for properties in Los Angeles or in Orange County, which are both my markets. And so I applied because I knew I had this property. It was in LA. We also had another property in Orange County at the time. So we were like determining if we're going to use that property or that or another property. Well, the property in Orange County fell out, right? So this is how, I think this is how all of our lives worked, right? Everything happens for a reason, right? We're all in this environment for a specific purpose, for a specific reason at a given time. And so we apply for the show with this LA property and they deny us. They said, no, nope, we found somebody else. Okay. I'm like, no, no worries. I think the circumstances at the time was they were worried about the delays of the eviction, right? So August go comes and we finally got the ruling to evict. We do the sheriff's removal, boom, we got the, we got the guy out. The very next day I get a phone call from the production crew. Hey, you still got that property in LA that you're going to flip? I'm like, yeah, we do actually. We just got the squatter out. Perfect. The last people that we had in mind, they fell through for whatever reason you're in. Nice. Right. It took us longer than we expected to get that eviction done, but it was actually the perfect timing for the show's circumstance. Yeah. And so now we got that property on HGTV. It's, a, it's been an amazing ride. Awesome. So now that's what you currently have going on, but what do you have on the horizon? Oh, we got a lot of things going on in the horizon. We set a goal in 2022 to close 12 transactions, whether it be a real estate transaction, retail is what we call it in our team versus a wholesale transaction and that's our real estate investment side. And so we ended up, all of our team members, we ended up closing 16 transactions in 2022. Wow, good for you, Joe. Thank you. 
It was an amazing year. And that also goes to prove how goal setting is super important. Yeah. Because when you set that goal, that target, all of those little smart activities that you're doing to get to that target are always going to reap you more than what you set your expectation for. Yeah. And so our goal this year is 24 transactions. We're already at four transactions closed in, since the beginning of the year. And so we have two fix and flips going on right now. We just put the LA property that's going to be on HGTV show on the market. And I was just at the property this morning and there was a, an organic showing. And I'm super excited because it was the, I just felt like they were the right demographic for the house. Yeah. And the real estate agent told me, Hey, you're going to be hearing from me later. I'm like, excellent. Great. Great. Excellent. Right. And by the way, I saw the post on Facebook, just that glimpse of it just looked awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We put a lot of work into that. That house got rebuilt from the foundation up inside wow. out. We spent way more money than we wanted to on that. And that's another story for another day. But now we have a project going in Diamond Bar, California. We got it in a probate on the MLS. We have another property in Riverside, California. We also got that one on a probate on the MLS. So we have two deals from the MLS in rehab right now. And I just got a phone call right before we got on this podcast today. We just locked up another deal in Orange, California, 1 million 50 and the ARV is $1.6 million. Nice. Good for you, buddy. That's great. Yeah. So now I got to, now I got to scramble to find a buyer for it. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. It always pans out, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah, man. All right. Now you're moving. You've got your hustle on. You've always been a grinder anyway. There was never a shock that you were going to start to take off. And when you did, you were going to start to double. All right. Now that we got that, what is one thing that you've learned as your wealth started to increase? The one thing that I've learned as, a, as my wealth has started to increase, I would say the biggest lesson that I've learned is know who you're getting into business with. I learned so many lessons from this one transaction in Los Angeles, the landlord advocate was also a general contractor. And from the encounter that I had during the eviction process, I should have learned how that guy did business from what did he tell me at the beginning, he told me 90 days, how long did it actually take? five months. What, what, what type of personality was that person? He was a tell you what you want to hear, knowing what the actual process was just to get you in the door, just to get your money spent with him. Yeah. And then, so the other factor is that now I'm in a situation where I only planned on holding that deal for six months. We were already at month five. Now I need to move quickly to get right. this thing rehabbed. Okay. He's a contractor. And I had the conversation with him. I'm like, look, we can't go through what we went through with the landlord advocacy. I need complete transparency and communication. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen at all. As a matter of fact, he got into this. He, it was, it's amazing how some people can spin the words to where you actually feel like you're guilty for holding them accountable. <laughs> he was really good at that. Yeah. 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 I get it. I get and it. so that's the biggest lesson that I learned is just, if you're, if you have a gut feeling that it's going to be bad, go with that gut feeling right? and spend an extra time, spend a little bit of extra time finding a different contractor or interviewing somebody else and spend a little bit more time on that rehab budget because all the money's lost or won in construction and all the money's lost or won in the contractors that you use. Yeah, man. It's a tough thing to deal with. It is a tough lesson to learn, but it's one that unfortunately we all go through at some point during this, this whole thing. And as coaches, you guys really do try to predict what's going to happen for us, yeah. <laughs> but you can't even, all the things that you have in that brain of yours can't, it just can't come out unless yeah. it's, oh yeah, something has to trigger it. Oh yeah. I dealt with that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And by that time it's too late. Yeah, exactly. But hopefully when we get to that point, when we start hearing those types of things that we're used to, we can turn around and say, this is how I got out of it. Or yeah. this is what happened at the back end, or this is the way I handled it. Or legally you can do this. At least we can provide that information. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Thing, unfortunately. Yeah, you definitely can't think of everything. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the things that, that the group is doing because you probably noticed this about me. I'm not the most guy, the first guy to lean on you guys. I tend to take what I need, what I know I need. I apply it and then I'm off to the races. But when I'm, when I need, you guys are there. So it's like a security blanket that you have, like a cape that you can just fly through this and know that you have people that have your back. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great segue. You said the magic word, fly. So we're going to go into the soaring four. Good day, high flyers. Are you ready to take your real estate investment sky high? Aim High REI is the perfect Facebook community for you. Get answers from experienced investors, connect with other motivated individuals, and benefit from valuable resources all in one place. If that sounds like something that interests you, join our amazing network today and we will help elevate your investing journey beyond what you think is possible. Simply search Aim High REI on Facebook. And the best part, it's completely free. Do you need help with your business? We can help you get out of a jam or even get you started in real estate. Check us out at BudEvans.com. Thanks. Now back to the show. The soaring four are the same four questions that we ask every guest that can help a new person or someone who's just beginning in the program to achieve new heights. Perfect. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So what is one thing that you use to keep you motivated? Meditation. Yeah, I'm a big time meditator, prayer. I'm a spiritual person. I believe that we are all called to serve others and bless others with love. So every morning without fail, I'm up before the sun comes up and I'm doing yoga and I'm moving into a mindset meditation and prayer and reading scripture and doing all of the things that help me stay strong throughout the day. I have the right mindset before you begin your day. Right. Mine's after the gym, seven minutes of guided meditation, followed by three minutes of pure silence. Going into mindset, what is one thing that you used to completely change your mindset? One thing that I've learned to uh, completely change my mindset, the first thing, the, the one thing that stands out to me the most is we are all people of our past experiences, right? And those past experiences stay with us. The thing that helped me the most is letting go of the past because you can't change it. So whether, you know, that deal that I lost 24 grand on my, my wife was freaking out, right? <laughs> She's the first deal you freaking stumbled. I could have went down that path and yeah. been right there with her. And that would have probably kept me losing more money. I didn't, I let the past go. And I said, Hey, what did I learn from that experience? So that way it would empower me to keep moving forward. And whatever happened five minutes ago, right? One minute ago. It's already done. It's already gone. The only thing you can do is affect what's going to happen in the next five minutes, 10 minutes, day, month, right. year. So now what tools are you using to keep you on track? I have so many tools to keep me on track. I actually have a time blocking schedule on my calendar where every minute is accounted for in the day. And if I get a squirrel moment, Maybe I checked, I went to go check something on my phone and then I ended up going into Facebook and going down that rabbit hole, or I get a phone call from one of my team members and now their agenda is pushed on me. It allows me to go right back to where I was and keep moving forward. Time blocking is a big thing. We preach it all the time in our, in our team meetings. You got to have every minute accounted for in the day. So then that way, you know exactly where to be in that time frame. What is one thing you would change if you had to start all over again? Oh, that's a, that is a good one. Wow. If there was one thing that I could change, if I had to start all over again, it would have been to assume that I was going to have to bring 20% down to the table on that deal. Cause that was a good deal. You, are you ready for, to hear how much it sold for? $2.7 million. Oh, okay. Wow. One one million one hundred thousand dollars over what I had it under contract for. That would have been a big win, my first deal. You can look at it that way, or you can look at it as though you learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a ton. But from that, what I did do is every single deal, I'm like, we're not going to count on what the lender says. 
we're going to count on what we know we can bring to the table. That really did, a, it, it had an impact on us going forward for the rest of our journey. Joe, in closing, is there anything that you're currently working on? Yeah, so we got the show coming out. They haven't still finalizing the recording of that. We should be getting a date here and we'll let everybody know when that's being released. But we're also going to be starting our own podcast and a TV show called The Inspired Show with Joe and Jorge. Okay. And Jorge is my business partner and he's been helping us with our, he's like the passive investor, but now he's more in, ingrained. And so we've had some experiences together on a couple of different things. And uh, we want to share those experiences and also in, in bring in people like yourself and other people that we are in our community. And so that's going to be starting recording here this month. And we'll start pushing the, pushing that out on all of the uh, podcast channels and YouTube. Okay. And flipping one one with Tarek El Moussa is the TV show that your flip is going to be shown on. Yep. Flipping one one Joe, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, how would they do that? You can go to our website. We have c-rei.com. That's J-S-C with a hyphen, rei.com. You can also go to gsocal.com. Um, That's our real estate residential team page. And then of course you can follow us on sh social media, but the best way to do that is by following me at Joe Cohen Inspires. That's basically everywhere. It's a, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, all of them all the platforms. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. If you want to go and talk to Joe, all of his contact information will be in the show notes. Until next time, aim high. Hey, just a reminder, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe.